Um, I guess my question for the panel is, you know, for that really severe anterior PLL, when do you try to take it out? When do you try to just free it up and let it float? And do any of you have any experience with the anterior anti-displacement controllable osteotomy procedures you're seeing a lot of reports of, mainly from China these days, where they're basically formalizing that approach and doing a, a corpectomy and on block pulling the vertebral body and the OPLL anteriorly. I've seen it, it looks cool, but I haven't done one. <laughs> <laughs> looks, looks cool looks and scary at the same time. No, I, I don't have any experience with that. I, I don't do that procedure, it looks cool. Oh, I, it makes a lot of sense theoretically. I'd love to see it in practice. Um, I, I, I think each case is different. I mean, I've done OPLLs where I, I'm going in there and uh, I, I make sure I go out laterally and get the foramen cleared and I try to detach it laterally. But I've gone to a point where there have been some cases where you just, you're just touch it. You get so thin, you get so close, you touch it and the patient jumps. Mm -hmm. And you touch it gently and it jumps. You take a burr and you try to, the diamond burr, and, you just try to, and they jump and then I know I can't do anything anymore. And so I'm very sensitive to looking at the, um, the signals, I'm looking at the patient, and, and sometimes um, it, it, when it's that bad in the front, I just float it. I just go disconnect it laterally and just get out. Because um, otherwise I'm calling Patrick to put a drain in. Yeah, I, go ahead. I, I mean, I, I, I just hate going anteriorly for LPL for a passion because of what Jeff just described. And I think it does depend on probably the way you take the, take down, uh, you know, any uh, osteophy anteriorly. For me, even for the giant spine cases, I'll take the drill all the way down to, and take down all the calcification until I get that soft spot with that OPL. With the OPLL, you just, I mean, with the PL, but with the LPL, you don't see that. So, so you're really just drilling onto the dura, essentially. And so it's not uncommon when I've gone anteriorly that I'll just, I'll get a, you know, I'm preparing for a leak. I'm, a, I'm getting a leak, and that, and that's a challenge for me. So, even when, so even when I approach it anteriorly, I usually just get down to the thin shell of bone as much as I can centrally, and then I'll go laterally to disconnect, and hopefully I can pull that up. And that's why I, I, I start posteriorly because I, I still depend most of my decompression posteriorly from the get go, and hoping that the little get little bit I get anteriorly is adequate because I, I just don't think I, I can get the same decompression ventrally without a CSF leak that's not easily uh, repairable um, and or even the risk of neurological injury because you're drilling right onto the, uh, the ventral cord. If it's been cervical spine and I have a sagittal balancer kyphosis issue, you know, my anterior approach will often not involve the worst level, <laughs> at least not at first. Correct. You know, I'll do the easy levels that have the most kyphosis. Right. Uh, that are at the, usually at the caudal part of the cervical spine. And then I'll tell them, look, there are occasions where we have to go back in and do a corpectomy or something like that. But I've seen some fairly ugly post-op MRIs where you get cord adhesion to the anterior vertebral body or what looks like a herniation of the cord through the dura. The patients can be doing okay, but it's, it's pretty ugly. And it tells you that, you know, between the vibration and all the picking with your microcurrets and everything else, it's not necessarily a benign approach.